Thank you very much. Thank you, Sherry D, and thank you, Sarah and Stephen and everybody for inviting me to Calgary, my first time here. <laughs> Blake, you're not going to understand the beginning of this next one, but just consider it a sound poem, okay? Um, the, I'm going to start off with a bilingual piece, a little bilingual poem. Because then you'll be relieved when it gets a bit easier to understand later on, okay? <laughs> Little bilingual piece called Kids' Poem, Bairnsang. It was January and a gay drich day the first day I went to the school. So my mum happed me up in my good navy blue nap coat with a red tartan hood Burled a scarf around my neck, pooed on my pixie and my pockies, it was that bitter, said, no you'll no starve. Gied me a wee kiss and a kid on scalp in the bum and sent me off across the playground to the place I'd learned to say. It was January and a really dismal day the first day I went to school. So my mother wrapped me up in my best navy blue top coat with the red tartan hood, twirled a scarf around my neck, pulled on my bubble hat and mitten, it was so bitterly cold, said, now you won't freeze to death. Gave me a little kiss and a pretend slap on the bottom and sent me off across the playground to the place I'd learn to forget to say it was January and a geidrich day, the first day I went to the school. So my mum happed me up in my good navy blue nap coat with a red tartan hood, barreled a scarf around my neck, pooed on my pixie and my pockies. It was that bitter. Oh, saying it was one thing. But when it came to writing it, in black and white, the way it had to be said, was as if you were posh, grown up, male, English, and dead. Thank you. <laughs> this next one, and most of the rest of my set, is going to be in English, albeit with a Scottish accent. This is a very old poem of mine. I think it's the first one I ever got finished. It's just called The Choosing. We were first equal, Mary and I, with same colored ribbons and mouse colored hair, and with equal shyness, we curtsied to the lady councillor for copies of Colin's children's classics. First equal, equally proud. Best friends too, Mary and I, a common bond in being cleverest, equal, in our small school, small class. I remember the competition for top desk or to read aloud th the lesson at school service and my terrible fear of her superiority at sums. I remember the housing scheme where we both stayed, the same houses, different homes, where the choices got made. I don't know exactly why they moved, but anyway, they went. Something about a three apartment and a cheaper rent, but sometimes from the top deck of the high school bus, I'd glimpse, among others in the corner, Mary's father, muffled, contrasting strangely with the elegant greyhounds by his side. He didn't believe in high school education, especially for girls, or in forking out for uniforms. Ten years later, on a Saturday, I am coming from the library, sitting near me on the bus, Mary, with a husband who is tall, curly-haired, has eyes for no one else but Mary, her arms around the full-shaped vase that is her body. Oh, you can see where the attraction lies in Mary's life. Not that I envy her, really. And I am coming from the library with my arms full of books. I think of those prizes that were ours for the taking and wonder when 
the choices got made we don't remember making. <laughs> Thank you. This next one is in the voice of a boy, um, a real a lad in quite a lot of trouble. It's just a little piece that I put together last year. It was to encourage people to join the children's panel, which is a sort of enlightened system we have in Scotland, um, whereby a child who's committed a crime or a child who's the victim of a crime or of neglect is treated in exactly the same way as a child in trouble. And somebody asked me to write something to encourage people to sign up as a lay member. So just a little piece called Listen. Trouble is not my middle name. It is not what I am. I was not born for this. Trouble is not a place, though I am in it deeper than the deepest wood, and I'd get out of it, who wouldn't, if I could. Hope is what I do not have in hell, not without good help now. Could you listen, listen hard and well to what I cannot say except by what I do? And when you say I do it for badness, this much is true. I do it for badness done to me before any badness that I do to you. Hard to unfankle this, but you can help me. Maybe loosen all these knots and really listen. I cannot plainly tell you this, but if you care, then beyond all harm and heart, real hope is there. As you can maybe tell from that one, I do like a good, oh, thank you very much. You don't have to clap the individual poems. They get very jealous of each other. They really do. Give me a hard time later. As you can probably tell, I do like a good cliche. Nothing wrong with a cliche. They got to be cliches because they said things very clearly. Um, so this one's just a string of cliches, really. Um, if you've been around uh, for, in this planet for any length of time, you'll have noticed that language isn't really equal for men and women. The same behaviour in men and women gets called different things, you know? Ambitious man, pushy woman. Um, she's a slag, she's a tart. He's a jack the lad. Uh, it's not a fair thing, language. So it's just a little piece called Men Talk. Women, rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. Women tattle and titter. Women prattle. Women waffle and witter. Men talk. Men talk. Women into girl talk about women's trouble. Trivia and small talk. They yap and they babble. Men talk. Men talk. Women gossip, women giggle, women niggle, niggle, niggle. Men talk. Women gossip. Women yap, yap, yap. Verbal diarrhea is a female disease. Woman, she spread she rumors around she like Philadelphia cream cheese. Oh, bossy women gossip and girlish women giggle. Women natter, women nag. Women niggle, niggle, niggle. Men talk. Men think first and speak later. Oh yeah, men talk. And uh, this second last one is um, about three men that I loved particularly. Um, I dedicated this to my friend Michael Mara who died last year, one of the best songwriters in Scotland. Um, have a look at him on uh, YouTube later. Michael Mara, M-A-R-R-A. -R -R -A. And if you don't fall in love with them and put them up there with um, Tom Waits and Bob Dylan, then there's something wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But um, I've always loved songwriters, and Michael had to write, well, he wrote the words and the music. I always liked the American lyricists, you know, the classic ones, the ones who's, who spoke Yiddish at home, or whose parents spoke Yiddish at home, and who were in love with the whole slangy American language and turned it into poetry that would break your heart. I loved them all. I loved Sammy Khan, who said, um, when they asked him, which comes first, the words or the music? First, the phone call. Um, I loved him. But I particularly loved these next two, the Gershwins. This is just called Ira and George. And I'm reading it tonight in memory of Michael Mara. First, the phone call as the man said, and he sure said a mouthful to that which comes first, words or music question. Who knows? Except for every good one, there are ten in the trash, songs you slaved over that just won't sing, in which no lover ever will find some wisecrack, twist itself to tell his unique heartbreak. So sore, so personal, so well, he can't stop humming it. The simplest three-chord melody might have legs once it's got the lyric, not tunesmiths, ham and eggs. Each catchphrase, colloquialism, each cliché, each snatch of overheard on the subway or street can say so much. So much when rhymed right, when phrased just so to fit its own tune that was born for it. A Manhattan night in 29 or 30. It's late. You're reading Herrick. Just back from a party, your brother calls out, Hey, let's work. You watch him shuck his jacket, loose his black tie, and grab your book. Gather ye rosebuds, he says, and slams it shut. He's right, hard against the deadline, and at night, shoes off, moon up, just daring you piano open, that's when you two can make it happen. The tune that smells like an onion, play it very slow then, the one that sounds like the Staten Island Ferry, till you hear the words. Brother. They're already there, under the siren and the train and the cab horn blare of his jazz of endless possibilities that will only fit its own fine-tuned lyric that is born for it. <clears throat> I'm of an age that didn't call them an album. I actually called it an LP. <laughs> this is just called In Praise of Old Vinyl. In the beginning was the chord, the perfect combo of the melody and the word, played at 33 and a third. Four in the morning, crapped out, yawning, Old vinyl, old vinyl, nostalgia's everything it used to be when you're half pissed and playing that old LP. You make me feel, you make me feel, you make me feel. It's not so easy listening without protection when you open Pandora's record collection. May you never lay your head down the box you've never even opened since your last flit, full of all you saved from that bad split. The albums, seminal and antique, you saved up pocket money for week after week. The ones that took your teenage soul apart, the ones that broke your 30-something heart. The ones you stole from old lovers with Moosley in the grooves, coffee stains in the covers, and printed lyrics that were pure. Lonely bedsitter literature. I learned the truth at 17. Oh, Dusty and Joni and Nico and Demi Lou, Dylan Van the Man and Ryman Simon too. Songs to flood you with all that came to pass between P 
piece of my heart and heart of glass. I once had a love and it was the gas, Annie and Katie and Eddie and Ella, for when you're home alone, inventing a lover on the saxophone. Oh, when he's gone and you and those lonesome blues collide, a certain canyon lady knows how you feel inside. The bed's too big, the frying pan's too wide. Furry sings the blues, well, if anybody can. Sincerely, El Cohen, you're my man. And, oh, my sweet lord, and he's so fine. Gravel-voiced Tom Waits with his blue valentine. And Otis and Elvis and some kind of wonderful Stevie were the men when you picked yourself up and tried to love again. Baby, I know. The first cut is the deepest, old vinyl, old vinyl. Nostalgia's everything it used to be when you're half pissed and playing an old LP. I want to walk in the open wind. I want to talk like lovers do. I want to dive into your ocean. Is it raining with you? Come on, come on, come on. Don't kid on, you don't remember when. Yesterday was young and it was raining men. Believe me. Believe me, though this old heart of yours been broke, it's murder. But old stereo's still in working order. Needle gets in the groove and proves it as it plays that all tomorrow's parties are now yesterday's. From Sinatra to Susie Quatra to Suzanne, it takes a lot of pain, it takes a lot of pain, Ooh, love hurts. And Buddy Holly, Billy Holiday, and Billy Fury, Janice Ian, and Ian Dury have little in common, as a matter of fact, except one hook, and they can take you back. I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm sorry that I made you cry. Apple Island Records, Rough Trade, HMV and Stiff, label me, turntable me, and let me rip. Do me wrong, do me right, tell me lies but hold me tight and you'll be back in love again, back at school, back in the US, back when memories will unspool like the audio cassette, your midnight collar compiled with easy like Sunday morning and born to be wild. He comes for conversation. Old vinyl, old vinyl, nostalgia's everything it used to be when you're half pissed and playing that old LP. May you never, may you never, may you never, may you never. Oh, hear those nice bright colors. Hear the greens of summers. You'll be wearing rags and feathers from Salvation Army counters. You'll be Marcy in a coat of flowers. Mama, please don't take my parlo phone away. Old vinyl, old vinyl, thank you.